Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope everybody's having a good day. I've got to make a table saw sled. And I jumped on YouTube here to, you know, get some ideas, see what, what's out there. Some of these are incredibly elaborate. And some of them are just dead basic, you know, piece of plywood and some two by fours. But seriously, there must be like 7,000 videos on how to make a table saw sled. I'm Jim. This is the 312 Workshop. We're going to make it 7,001. Stick around. Now, I know what you're thinking. Do I really need to make a video about making a table saw sled? Well, everybody was doing it. I just wanted to be popular. Okay, I've got some material out. Uh, T-track. Some clamps. Nothing else fancy. And uh, I make up some runners. I got to do a little sanding on these. But uh, made, made up some runners out of oak. And they should be fine. I always have a few of them in the shop. I've got some scrap plywood to make parts out of. Uh, somebody will comment inevitably that this is oak veneer plywood. And oh, you can use that for a cabinet. Well, it's got some sort of defect in the back. So. But I've got things marked out. I'm actually going to get two sleds out of this, plus rails for the fence, and then I'm going to use this piece to get other rails. Just doing a little sanding to knock any stray fibers off the ends, and then we will glue up the pieces that will make the fence. Honestly, I don't know why people use so much glue nowadays. You know. I understand they want to make sure everything sticks, but really, you know, because if it runs all over the place, you just have to clean it up. Now, granted, I'm laminating these together, and I want to make sure there's good coverage, but, you know, I don't need 10 pounds of glue in a 5-pound box. Okay. I'm going to use a level to clamp these to get them nice and straight. I put a spacer in. Like I said, I'm clamping these to my levels. And luckily enough, I have two four-foot levels. I did a little construction back in the day. I don't want the marks from the clamps. I'm going to be looking at this every time I'm in the shop, so. Um, I've started doing some layout while the uh, fen two fences uh, cook in the clamps. Um, I've measured over, I'm using the right side as a reference point. I've measured over nine and seven eighths, and that is this side of the blade. That puts this side of the blade at 10 inches. And then I'm measuring over four inches, and that is the inside edge of a track that I will dado in to the uh, bed of the sled. Now, I, of course, don't won't need to go the full distance. I'm only going to put one in here. I don't see the reason to put two. As you can see, I've routed two channels for the track. It fits in nicely, just slightly lower than the surface. I've stopped them for the fences, and that way I didn't have to square them up. And then of course, I'll be cutting the track far enough back that I can slide a uh, clamp in. Okay, so I've got these, you know, mocked up just so I could get measurements here. I've got these cut to fit. Luckily, this is aluminum, easy enough to cut with a carbide blade. Just be careful, take your time. And you saw me do a little sanding work just to get rid of some of the rough edges. Now, uh, the next step is to route a dado in the top of this so I can mount a piece of track. Okay, so now we're going to do some trimming on this rear fence to reduce some weight.
we're just adding a little more lightness to the front fence. and mount the rails to the table saw sled itself. I've milled these, got them all nice and sanded. I have put nuts in the bottom here to make it so that the miter stands a little proud of the table. I'm gonna use a combination of wood glue and CA glue. And one of the things I wanna do, I'm gonna just double check my measurements. I want to stick a mark here just so I know that's where I'm cutting them off. Okay. Uh, now remember, I've struck a line here that is nine and seven eighths over from the edge. So the rip fence is nine and seven eighths over from the right side of the blade. That'll put, that'll put that kerf line right there. Now I have made sure everything is parallel. Parallel, the fence is parallel to the miter slots. I've marked in what I want. All right, so I'm gonna put the wood glue on first. And again, I'm just using that as further adhesion. I have my CA glue ready to go. My CA glue will act as somewhat of a clamp to hold them on while I do this. Uh, of course, once I get it done, I'm gonna flip it over drill, countersink, put some screws in that have to be countersunk. CA glue will do that. It thickened up because of age. This bottle's almost empty. Now, I did not strike a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this and I know approximately where I need to put my accelerator. I hold it here where there's no glue and go like that. Put the edge where there's clear and drop it just like that. You want to press down, make sure you get good contact with that CA glue. I've marked my drill and I am going to just put four screws down each one. Now, I wanted to show you, even though I pre-drilled and figures it was the last screw, of course, it split. Here's a way you can solve that. I've left the screw partially in and I am, I am actually might try to drive the screw a little bit further, get it a little bit wider and I'm just going to run a little bit of glue down that joint. go. Now once that's down, I will back the screw out. Okay. And then I will take a small clamp and clamp it. Now I will have to take the screw out and I'll have to gently chisel and sand that down. But that should hold. This should solve it. Have to let it sit for at least several hours. This is not something you put together and then wait. Now, this is something you put together and go have dinner, which I'm about to do. Thanks.
What? I said I was going to eat dinner. And now to cut these off. Okay, I've got all my parts laid out. I think I've got everything made that I need. I uh, also made up the uh, safety block at the back for where the saw comes through the sled. And I made up some stop blocks, just a piece of half inch glued to a piece of three quarter inch. I chamfered the top and the front edge of the front of it. Uh, it should be about an eighth of an inch proud of the bed of the sled itself, which it should work, no problem. And uh, I mean, I know these things can be purchased. J. Katz Moses has made one that's excellent. I know uh, Tamara 3 by 3 has gotten into a branding agreement with him. And Jason at Bourbon Moth, I've heard, has uh, gotten into a branding agreement too. So I figured, why not make my own? Now we're gonna make the first cut in the sled itself. I have to remove the riving knife to be able to do that correctly. So. Now, when I make this cut, I'm gonna stop about three to four inches away from the back of the sled so that I can square up the rear fence. Okay, now I'm gonna attach this a little bit differently. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the five cut method. This is a very short distance. It's not gonna be out that much over say five inches kind of thing. You know, this is more for small to maybe medium parts. Uh, if I need to cut cabinet sides and things like that, I've got a panel cutter, a la Norm Abrams. Um, so I've actually just got this setting here. I've got a thin square that fits in the kerf and goes up against the side of the kerf. And I've got another square that's a little thicker so it won't fall into the chamfer I cut for the dust. So line those up and now it should be within a couple thousandths of being square. So got a feeler gauge and I'm just going to try to see it's pretty good that's pretty decent it might be fractionally off but I'm okay with that and if I have to repeat I'll put one screw in repeat this procedure I just wanted to make sure that I was flush with the back and even when you drill your holes, make sure you're going to be free of that kerf. I like to stay an inch either side of it. Okay, now that these are set, nice and square, start putting in the track. 
I have cut the dado on the top of the fence very tight. So it's, there we go, it's in. Okay. Nice and tight. Now I will be drilling small holes just to keep things centered. I'm not going very deep. some CA glue. Remember I've kept it proud from the front fence and proud from the back fence. That way I can slide the T-nut in of the clamp I'm going to use. And again I think the CA glue, CA glue will be fine. Um, you know I'm not trying to uh, clamp something together with you know gluing pressure. I'm trying just to snug things down so they don't move when I run them through the saw. Okay so now it's time to put the safety block on the back. I will be gluing it. I am going to keep it a little more proud of the table saw surface when the slit is in the slots uh, than most people. I'm not going to mount it vertical. You know, I uh, should never have the blade high enough that it could catch this aluminum. Um, but yeah, I'm going to uh, glue it. I'm going to drill some holes either side of my kerf line. Now, I am going to just lightly put some pencil marks just so I can see where to drill my holes. Okay, I've made one little change. I really feel that the CA glue on this center rail is fine, but I found some little tiny screws. Now, I still have to grind the tip off, but what I've done is, and I didn't pre-drill or anything, I just took one as was and drove it in to each of the three holes about two turns. And now, I'm going to put them in my pliers and go over to my disc sander and grind off the end. I can thread them right in. I'm just hand tightening these, but it'll just give it that little bit of extra strength. All right, now we'll just finish it up with a little paste wax. One sled slides perfectly fine. This one binds a little bit right in this area. And I've been able to pretty much figure out that it's along these two lines. And what you do is you take a nice square block, okay? Take a piece of take a piece of sandpaper. I'm using some 120 garnet. Put it down to where it just touches. Then turn it. And you see. So now it'll sand, it'll sand down, but it won't sand the base of the sled. Put it up against the rails and run it against it. And you'll have, to, you'll have to keep checking. It really is, do it five times, five times, flip it over, drop it in the miter slots. If you don't see any noticeable improvement when you do the inside of the rails, Go ahead and do the outside of the rails. Do 
four times, four times each, put it back in. See if you see a noticeable difference. In my case, so there you have it, two identical miter slides. Now somebody's gonna ask why did I do two? This one's for 90s, this one will be for any miters I need, 45, 30, etc. Um, the front will always get messed up, but if you remember, I did not glue a section here to the rear fence. So I should be able to carefully cut it, drop in a new piece, and then it'll still be zero clearance. So this is my design. I'm going to call this the 312 table saw x sled because the X makes it sound cool. Now down below, do your thing, you know. Please comment <laughs> on me. <laughs> like me. Follow me. Good night, everybody.